My name is Christine De Luca, but that's my married name. And my real name is Christine Persson. I was born in Bresse in Shetland. And then uh, most of my life, my childhood was spent in Waas, on the Waas side of Shetland. A group of islands at the very north end of Scotland. Quite isolated for the mainland, really. Um, Waas is called Walls, uh, but it really means inlets of the sea. And it's a, one of these things that the army, making the maps, got confused with. Um, and they put down the word walls. So when you say, I come for walls, you feel as if it's sticking in your mouth because you come for was. Anyway, that had a fundamental effect on me, um, being brought up in a pretty um, crafting fishing community um, ah, my childhood. When I came away to Edinburgh, where I bide new, and I'm bidding for 50 years, um, I found Edinburgh really quite awe-inspiring and quite scary. Um, and of course, I had to be careful who I spoke because I had to speak English. We, we learned to speak English at school, of course. We had to be bilingual and no be rude. But um, I did miss no being able to speak in me and why. I think when I realised later on that the chances of me going home was likely brally slight, I thought, I found a release in, in writing in Shetland dialect. It was a pretty bit difficult to, to write in the dialect because we never learned to read or write it. It was kind of um, mainly spoken. There, there was a dictionary, there was ways of writing it, but we never learned it formally, so we had to kind of just manage with cells. But anyway, I, I started writing subversively in, in Shetland, in Shetland dialect. And, um, and then, as I wrote mayor and was moving among folk interested in poetry, then they became aware of that. And, and I found that they quite licked it, and that was really quite strange. I thought they would find it awful queer. So I wrote mayor and enjoyed doing that. And as time's going on, I'm writing mayor and mayor. I would say no, I wrote about half and half, maybe even mayor is half in the Shetland dialect, or Shetlandic, um, and the rest in English. And it's been translated into all kind of languages, um, which to me seems bizarre and extreme. I thought I might read this poem. It's mostly in English, because it's about the relationship between language and dialect. I had been working with two Nordic poets, um, an Icelandic poet, and his poem was about um, a bird, um, the snipe, and the Icelandic word for the snipe is the hrossagokar. And the Shetland word for it is Hosgok. And I'd been working with a Norwegian poet, and his poem was called Hegri Hoiden, which is a bird called the heron. And the Shetland word for, for a heron is a Hegri. And I thought that was quite interesting. Anyway, it starts off in English. It's a kind of a manifesto. Spelling it out. It's the way a cat fawns, a bird flaunts, a dog recoils and whimpers. It's the way a cricket chooses from his bag of chirpings, or a whale sends a long-distance message. It's the way our forefathers moved to the forest floor, and in the tonality of their vocal chords said, I and you, in a thousand different ways, picked up the grammar of polemic, and persuasion, the lexicon of lewd and lovely, the tenses that made sense of time past and time to come. It's the borders, armies and classes that corner the limits of language, patois or pigeon, colloquial or kailyard, vernacular or slang. It's the famous thesaurus that suggests three meanings for dialect, other than dialect and language. Speciality, unintelligibility, and speech defect. It's the funding that flows from decisions. It's the boundaries and commissions that decide that pub is kosher in Norwegian, but only if pronounced pub. That heron heights and hegri hoiden is both languages, but hegri heights is dialect. That horse gawker and snipe is language, but horse gawk 
is dialect. It's the passion we had when we nun to ourselves, when we bal sun for our bosie into the heavens, when we lay a word of love upon in another, when we done a butter with narrow definition. A little bit of anger comes out there at the end of that poem, I suppose. But it's true, I mean, the politics of language and dialect is something I'm interested in, and the status. And I think it's important that we don't let bairns think that their mother tongue is somehow debased language, that we lift them up and encourage them into bilingualism where they're comfortable, and they can when they speak one why and then a tether why. Um, and that's something I'm very interested in. It's funny that I'm just been made Edinburgh's macker or poet laureate, which I think is really quite astounding, really, given that I'm Kent O oh, as a Shetland writer um, and that I am quite passionate about it. I suppose I haven't been here for 50 years and I do write in English, but I feel it gives me a bit of space to write and to help other folk that's come into the city with minority cultures and folk that maybe feel their language is subservient and no see good as and I hope I can maybe help uh, them feel good about their, their mother tongue. Maybe I should just read another pretty poem, this thing totally in dialect. Yeah. It's called Discontinuity. And it's just, I suppose, a kind of seize the day poem. Um, it's about relationships. If you're like me, you're going along a beach and you pick up a stone and you hit a tack at home with you kind of bare note. But this time I was walking on a beach in Shetland, there was a beautiful, perfect heart-shaped stone, but it was barely big, and I couldn't get it on the plain home. So I patted up high on the cliff face, hoping that it would maybe still be there when I got back. Um, the title, Discontinuity, is a geological term, but you're likely kind that. And it means the juxtaposition of rocks of different ages or types. And there are places in Shetland where you can put one foot on um, the Eurasian continent and another foot on the American continent, which is quite fun. Twenty words to help you. A sandy loo is a ring plover, that lovely pretty bird that trips across the sand. Uh, sandy loo. Vimmerin is just trembling. If you're greeting, you're crying. And the lunabrack is um, that surge and breaking of the waves on the shore. Discontinuity. I could blame the why the sea is smooth the stains, the silk a touch, the wailing, laving, and will the hurt be there when I come back? Or I could blame the sandy loo. He was clear quite white again, this why no, nay look an hour your shudder tied dus na wet. See the why the swallow joy is drained. Dance the day, the morn you slip into eternity. Or I could blame the hush that fills you till you like to burst with all the words that could be said but you had back. That's what happens when you step in time, but sense a fault line vimmering through you, this side or that. Only the sea can greet and sing at the same time, shade and light, cobalt, ultramarine, and then the lunabrack, a ties a frush of white.